Yeah, did you go? I, yeah, I, I, it was a lot of fun uh, that it? other day when they said that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Oh, yep, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, oh, 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 sorry about that, guys. You, um, yeah, we were oh. having a conversation. We forgot where we were and what we were supposed to be doing. Oh, my goodness. We were off task. Sorry, guys. Hey. They'll forgive us, right? Well, of course they will. They probably were thinking. What are they talking about? Yeah, I wonder. What, what you, were they talking about? Maybe about the plans that we had to go to the... Where we, where were we going to go? That's right. Uh-oh, were we... Were Debbie, did you catch Miss Debbie and I plotting to go to the uh, BCD? That's the right. City Diner. City Diner. We're making our plans. Uh-oh, yeah. So don't... Just ignore that whole just, thing. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But okay. Stay right. tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. Because that's that'll be our land, uh, our land flow. With that's Nick right. Ryan, so and we're right. going to the promised land of the Bluff City Diner. There we go. There we go. Well, again, it's good to see everybody. I hope that you're doing well and everybody, you know, is uh, is feeling good and and doing the best they can under trying circumstances, right? Always, always. So, what an inspiration you all are to me amen. and all of us. Amen. Well, so let's, let's give everybody a shout you out. Know you know what? Let's, right. let's do it in reverse. Oh! Let's make it hard Okay, no, wait a minute. I got to wait. I got to close my eyes and remember. Well, we're going to start up here with everybody. That's right. The, the caregivers. All, all of our caregivers. Thank you. Shout out to you guys. Absolutely. And all. Oh. Then our solid rock. That's our solid rock, Miss Dot. Miss Dot, Miss Diana. And Miss yep. Diana. Yep. We can call her the Pebble. Okay, all right, all right. Because. Yeah, there we go. She's Miss Dot's daughter. That, and hey, a that good works. one at that. That works. That works. The Rock and the Pebble. There we go. It I works. Like it. it works. And then right after that, we've got our oh, friends. Oh, that's right. So happy. That would be Violet. Yeah, that's so right. I Violet, love you, Violet. Violet. Good to oh, see you. and her and her roommate Sandy. Hey, Sandy. That's right. Well, well, we should probably have said Sandy first. We should have said Diana then Dot if we're really doing it. I tried doing it reverse. So caregivers Diana Dot, Sandy then Violet. That's right. Which means the next one is Mr. Mr. Don. Don. Hey, Mr. Don, that's and right. going nice. in reverse, Miss Joanne. Joanne. Hello, that's good to right. see you. And if we're going in real reverse, it would we be have to be. Harry. Hey, Harry. Hey, Harry. Good to see you. And then Porter. Porter. Good to see you, I Porter. That's right. That's right. Okay. Oh, and then Chris. Yes, our friend Chris. I love you, Chris. Yeah, man. Yeah, good to see you, Chris. And then yes. Scott. Sir Scott. Good to see you, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. And Mr. Michael. Mr. Mike. Good to see you, Mike. Hope and things Ray. are going well. Oh, can we hear her singing? You are my sunshine. Miss Jan. Jan. Hey, Miss Jan. Good to That's see you. That's right. And then... Miss Patty. Patty. Miss Patty LaBelle. That's right. Not, not, not LaBelle, though. No. It's, no, it's Miss Patty. Miss Patty. She's Ms. more fabulous than Patty LaBelle. She is. And, and a good teacher. Absolutely. And oh my goodness, and how she can make things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And then... Oh, she's real good at crafts. Yeah. She's great. And then last and then, but not least. Uh wait. Thank you, Lord God, God Jesus, Jesus for Flora May. There we go. Good to see you. I'm hoping everybody's doing good. I uh, you know what? They are. Yeah. And what makes me I just oh my heart's just so full of mm -hmm. how great they have been. Yeah. What an example you all have been to. I agree. All of us. And 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 uh, it'll be so good when we are able to yes. finally go take our big trip to the Bluff City Diner. That's right. We're going to turn it into the Bluff City Buffet. We're going to eat so much food. That's right. Just make sure we got to go like early in the day so I can come home and take a nap. I okay? think that's right. Well, for, for us all. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely need to have a nap. And all what the, we will keep that promise. Yeah. Yes, we will. Well, and by the time that you guys are watching this, you know, uh, we'll be on into, what, October sometime, yeah. which Our means we're getting up near that really awesome, awesome little time that we have at the end of October where we get the candies oh. and stuff, Halloween. And guess whose birthday is the same as Halloween? Whose? 
That would be Miss Flora May. Flora May, is your birthday on Halloween? It is. And you know who else? Uh -huh. We have lots of birthdays in October. Okay. We have Chris. Oh, good. Chris. Yeah, man. Birthday. Our friend, yeah. And Patty. Hey, Patty. Yeah, happy birthday, Absolutely. Patty. Absolutely. And guess who else? Who? Yours? What's your birthday in October? 10 4. All right, 10 4. As in, buddy. 10 4, good buddy. <laughs> 10 4 back door. There we go. Well, I, you know who else's birthday is on Halloween? You'll who? never guess it. My daughter. Really? Yeah, Did yeah. Did you hear that, Flora Man? Yeah, you share the same birthday as my daughter, Joan. Yeah. How about that? that cool? And you know somebody else who has a birthday in October? Who? The Rock, Miss Dot. Really? Man, yeah. oh, this is like the Friendship October This is the birthday Friendship class. class October birthday. We'll have to make sure to get some candy around. I'm so, just some saying. Some candy, That's right? right. Yeah, it'll be good. Chris, Patty, Flora May, Dot, and Debbie, five. And, and Joan, my and daughter, Joan, six. Six. That's too much. I've got so many birthdays. My son's birthday is coming. What is today? Today is September the 17th. Uh-huh. My son's birthday is in six days, and he turns 16. we got to get him a license. Oh, Pastor Sam. I know. I know. Oh, Pastor Sam. I my insurance. Oh, Pastor Sam. That's, that's big, that's big, 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 big. That's big, big time. Yes, it is. Yeah, so I hope he'll be okay. We'll see. Would he prefer just a fishing license? No, no. You know, he would like to have a driver's license. And so, but he has the he has the birthday September 23rd, and then my daughter has hers October 31st. Mine is November 24th. My brother's is December 11th. I mean, it's just, and my grandmother's birthday was like last week. So we got them all packed in here yeah. in like you know a few months. So. Right. But that's just the way it goes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, happy birthday to our birthday people. Good to see Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And I uh, hope that you'll enjoy our lesson today. But before we get there, we have to sing our theme song. Yes, we do. Because what have we been studying? We've that's been studying right. about Moshe, Moshe, Moses, the man. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to sing. Let's see here. Uh, we'll do one and five again, okay? One Let's and do five. It. There we okay, go. All got right, it. All right, so. Okay. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand, let my people go. Go down, go down, Moses, Moses, way down, down in Egypt's land. Tell old, tell old, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. Just ever for follow my command. Let my people go, and we'll possess fair Canaan's land. Let my people go. Go down, go down, Moses, Moses, tell me down, down in Egypt's land. land. Tell old, tell old, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let, let my people go. go. All right. Did y'all see how I messed up on that? We've song. sung it so much, I think it's now we we're just messing That's up. That's right. It's okay. Just ever follow my command. Let my, my people, people go. go. Yeah, there now we go. What? There you go. Yeah. Thanks for giving me a... That's just because we didn't have Jan here. Well, I know. we we got to listen closer to what we can and, hear. Uh, exactly. Absolutely. Well, listen, this week we're doing our lesson on what happened after God gave the Ten Commandments. And the rules. So now remember what we're, what's going on here. God wants to hang out with us. And I got the story just a little wrong the last time I told it because there's a sequence. So when the people first come to the mountain, yeah, God wants to, them to stay back a little bit because they need to, con the word is they need to consecrate themselves. They need now, to... Now what does consecrate mean, Pastor Sam? That means that they need to sort of um, set themselves apart oh, a little bit. They okay. need to like, they need to think about God and take a bath and get in their good clothes and okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're, they're, they're coming again to the presence of God. They're trying to prepare to be with all that is holy. Exactly. So pre prepare themselves. Prepare, that's a good that's way to, okay. to, to put it. Prepare themselves of saying, 
I am open to being yeah. with everything holy and godly. So God, okay. so God gives commands for them to consecrate and prepare themselves all around the foot of the mountain, and He sets limits because remember, God's holy, God's awesome, God's so separate and apart and large and in charge because yeah. his name is Yahweh. He's so large and in charge. You don't mess with God, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, you need to prepare yourself uh, because we're going to live. I'm going to hang out with you. All right? It's like if the President of the United States said, I'm going to hang out with you, you'd probably clean up your house, right? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. actually, um, I would do that for Pastor Sam. Hey, there we go. Uh, that, there we now, go. Now, now, that, now, to me, that's a better example. Okay, would, okay, all right. I might not do that for the Oh, well, well, well we're, we're going to move right on. Hey, hey, so we're, so I will get everything good <laughs> and prepared. I might even order takeout yeah, because yeah. it wouldn't be so bland food if Pastor Well, I don't know. I want some of her what is it, so <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. So, so again, you've got a special guest, and this is God who created everything, and he said he, he has this special place where he's going to dwell, uh, uh, right on the mountain, in the midst of the people. God wants to hang out with them. They need to get themselves ready. They need to prepare themselves, and God's there, and thunder, and cloud, and lightning. Moses goes up, and, and he receives instruction from God to, for them to prepare themselves, and he receives the rules. If I'm going to hang out with you. Yeah. If I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people and we're going to get it right and, 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 and almost like recreating that Garden of Eden space. Right. You know, and, and right the ship, so to speak. We're going to right. make things the way they ought to be. Then you're going to need to follow these rules because when you do that, you're loving me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yeah. And you're also taking care of your neighbor. Good. You're being the human beings I created you to be. And then at the, the end of this, the people were to come up again to the foot of the mountain. And they, they did. They said, all right, we're going to follow these rules. They, they kind of get married. God and the people get married. Mm -hmm. All right? And they're, they're saying, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm, we're going to be faithful. We're going to follow you. We're going to trust you. But they're still afraid. Yeah. And, and they're so afraid, um, you know, they say, um, don't speak directly to us, God. But Moses, speak to Moses and then have Moses speak to us. So, uh, so they're sort of like, we want to hang out with you, but only so far. Yeah. That's the fear where they kind they, of back up. Yeah. They're just kind of like, I don't know if we can stand all of this. And, but, it but, probably it, was overwhelming. Yeah. Don't you think that they were yeah. just overwhelmed with all of this? Like, they've never encountered anyone yeah. that large and in charge. Exactly. And they were like, oh... Oh, can I handle it? Yeah. They probably were insecure in their ability to be that strong and having that very, very strong bond. Yeah. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. And so they were overwhelmed, and they're like, God, you know, we'll take this so far. Moses, you speak. And, and everything should be good. And the next several chapters in, Genesis, or in Exodus, because that's Exodus chapter 20, is God giving further instructions on, all right, you said you're going to follow the rules. Yeah. So here's the thing. We're going to make a little kind of shelter for me to dwell in. Because I'm oh, here on the mountain. Okay. Right? I'm here on the mountain. And now, I've told you you can only come so far. And I know I can only come so far without utterly terrifying you. So I'm going to give you, and they, they, they spend like, it's like 10 chapters of the book of Exodus on what was going to be the housing place for the presence of God. And we call that the tabernacle. Oh, All right? And there was an Ark of a Covenant where God would, would sit. His presence would reside. And the whole idea is you've consecrated. you set yourselves apart. We've kind of gotten married. Yes. And we're going to now... It's like when a man and a woman get married, what do they do? They move into their house. Well, that's right. That's right? right, yeah. So, that so now, yeah. There, yeah. So now there's going to be this tabernacle at the center of the camp of the people of God, sort of at the center of their house, and there's going to be a house for the presence of God, and there, and then all the instructions are given on how to sort of set the house up so God's holy presence can reside in the midst of the people. Oh wow! So, and yeah. so this is good. I mean, this is like this is move-in day. Yeah, that's right. This is move-in day of the first day. Uh, so to speak, of the marriage of the people of God to God. This should be awesome. It's like the honeymoon. 
Isn't that something yeah. else? And you can have all kinds of fun, you move know, with your bride day. on wow. on moving day, or, or in your case, like a, with a husband on the right, moving day. Right. It's honeymoon day. I love it. And so Moses goes up to the mountain, continues to get instructions from God, uh, and and setting things up, ready, getting ready for moving day, and it's going to be so awesome. And that's where we pick up in Exodus chapter thirty-two, our story for today. Okay. And. Move-in so, day. Move-in wow. day, yeah. So God called Moses to come up to Mount Sinai for a private meeting. Okay. Because, you know, we've got to take care of final things. Right, 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 right. You know, God's told them the commandments through Moses, and they've agreed to do it, and so he's going to set the rules down, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like even when you do get married, you have a, a marriage license you have to fill right. out, right? that's true. It's got to be on paper. So Moses left Aaron in charge. Aaron was his brother. Okay. All right. He was the first of the the first high priest. And Moses was gone for a long time. Because again, we're getting all the final details down. Okay. It's it's moving day. Right. And so you know, there's a lot of things to take care of. In fact, however, Moses was gone so long that the people didn't think he was going to come back at all. Oh, were they getting restless? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, wow. So, the people, and this is where the story gets bad. Uh-oh. Aaron, bad they went story. They, This is, so they're like, yeah, Moses has come back. God's forgotten all about us. It's supposed to be moving day. We did all this stuff. It's not happening. Because, again, they're really good at grumbling and complaining and yeah, forgetting. There, there you go. And they keep forgetting. Right? They, they agreed to live. They made the agreement. We're getting married. We're going to honor you. No other gods. No idols. We're, no, we're not going to use your name in vain. We're going to honor the Sabbath. They made all these promises. And it only takes a few days for them to start forgetting. Oh, mercy. So the people went to Aaron, the mo brother of Moses, and said, you know what? God's forgotten about us, so we need a God to lead us. Moses has disappeared, and you don't think he's coming back, so make a God for us. Now, when it says make a God for us, are we breaking some rules? Yes, we are. What were the first two commands? That's right. No other gods. God. That's right. And don't make a, an image. That's right. And, and in, I would say you could also say that... Um, the other two are broken as well. The one about vain, using the Lord's name in vain right. and also the honor the Sabbath. The using the taking the, the 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 name of the Lord in vain, you know, they one are talking about God or their relationship with God or Moses in a way that is just serving their complaint, so they're not oh, really taking okay. God seriously. Right, right. right. Uh, and also, too, when you make a God in your own image, or you're getting ready to do what the people are getting ready right. to do, you're, you're not taking God seriously. You're kind of, you know, God's, you know, not really who He says He is, large and in charge. Oh, and, gee. All right? You're using, him, you're using Him as an excuse for your own pet project. Right. And then the fourth one about honoring the Sabbath, we're going to find it out. They're going to have a party, and it's sort of like a mockery of what oh. the Sabbath day is supposed to look like. Because oh, the Sabbath day is supposed to be a day of rest, right? where right. we enjoy all the good things that God has given us, our food, and just you know relax and all this kind of stuff. Well, they're getting ready to have a party. But it's like a, it's a mockery of the Sabbath that God made. So, so here the people are. They've just gotten married to God. The rules are, you know, have been given. They've even they've been given instructions on how to create a house for God to hang out in in the yes. tabernacle. It's move-in day. Moses goes up. He's delayed a little while by talking to God. They completely forget about God and they break. I think the first four commandments. Yes, they did. Oh my word! Yeah, like on the it's like it's like on your day of your marriage, uh, and you go to a honeymoon, and like you find out like maybe this person you married isn't the person you thought. So, Aaron said, "Well, all right, if you say so." I mean, Aaron is such Aaron. a is such a dunce here at this point. He says, "All right, well, take off any gold jewelry jewelry that you're wearing and bring Aaron it to me." Aaron did that. Aaron. 
And oh, so all the priest. people who and they were supposed to be the high priest. That's right. Yeah, and it, it would be like the the minister at your wedding, being like, "All right, well, I mean, go do whatever you want to do. Oh, I would lose my job." Yes, you would. Well, we, we all know he wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. You're right. We all we all know this. <laughs> so. The people obeyed Aaron, and he had a big old pile of gold jewelry in front of him. And so Aaron put all the gold into a pot and melted it down into liquid. And they molded it, and they formed the liquid gold into the shape of a calf, like a like a like a uh, small cow. All right. What are they thinking? And you have to realize, in the ancient world, the cow was like a. Uh, a symbol of all kinds of things. Strength, power, also oh. fertility. You would use a, like a big um, uh, ox to, to pull, uh, you know, as you plow the fields. Um, you know, so that it's a symbol of fertility. Uh, you know, it's, it's power, strength, fertility, okay. all these sorts of things. So the people saw this golden calf and cried, This is the God who brought us out of Egypt. They're saying that this image that they weren't supposed to make and have no other gods before them, they're saying that this golden calf is God that's large and in charge. And that's why it breaks the third commandment. They're using God's good name for their own little pet project. And Aaron saw how excited the people were about the golden calf and how popular he was for making it. And so he took it a step further. He built an altar and announced that next day the, there would be a festival to honor the Lord. Aaron made his own Sabbath for this I stupid golden calf. I am beyond disappointed in Aaron. I, I thought he had better sense you than this. Think. It's like, well, the Bible in some ways is like a soap opera. It's well, like the yeah. best one ever. And it's like that turn that comes in the episode. And the person that you thought was your friend is really your enemy. Well, so much, so much for Aaron. I know. So the people were excited and they got up early on this false Sabbath to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. And they celebrated with feasts and drinking and all kinds of lewd and terrible behaviors that did not please God. Well, no, it didn't. Because again, so, so they were supposed to have their honeymoon with God. Mm -hmm. And God was getting ready to move in. And now they're having a honeymoon with this false idol. So, meanwhile, up on Mount Sinai, God knew what was going on with the people. He says, Moses, go back down the mountain to your people. They've done something terrible. They agreed to live by my Ten Commandments. We got married. It was moving day for our marriage. But they're already disobeying me. They're already cheating on me. Mercy, mercy, yeah. mercy. They've made and, and, and I'm not and, and for anybody who thinks I'm stretching the biblical witness, I'm not. There's a lot of prophets, and Hosea is a great example of this. Um, that is used where God instructs the prophet to basically marry. Uh, someone and then who who is going to cheat on that person because God's going to talk about marriage as that bond between Israel and God. God understood it as a marriage vow. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm not making that up. That's no. it's, this is a marriage vow, and that's why I keep talking about it in this okay. way. Okay, and that's in Hosea. Yeah, Hosea. It's right there. Hosea. The, okay. It's, and there there are others as uh, others as well, but that's just the easiest one to explain. Um, they've made an idol and they've gone after other gods and they're worshiping it on a false Sabbath and they're making sacrifices to it and they're taking my name in vain saying that this is the God who brought them out of Egypt. Moses, I'm done. They've cheated on me on our like first day of our marriage. Leave me alone and I'm just, I'm angry. I'm going to destroy the people. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm going to destroy all of them because this marriage isn't going to work. That's what God's saying. Oh, my. And you know what? I'll still keep my promises because you know what? I'm going to get rid of them. But I'll take you, Moses. You're an heir of Abraham. 
You're a, ch you're a child of Israel. You've been faithful. I'll take you, and just like with your ancestor Abraham, I'll make a promise to you that through you, I'll make a great nation. He's going to start all over again. Okay. That's what God's saying. But here's the really cool thing. Is Moses, he was mad. He couldn't believe what the people had done. He was angry. He was disappointed. He weeped. Of course he did. But he did something else. He begged God to spare the people. He did. Yeah. And so this is where the story really does come full circle. Abraham, there was a point where Abraham, God made this promise, through you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. I'll make you a great nation. And then uh, there's a point where God's getting ready to judge uh, uh, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham actually argues with God and says, well, what if there are 50 righteous in the city? Would you destroy the city? What if there are 40, 30, and all the way down to 10 uh, righteous? And, um, you know, at the end of the day, God actually, you know, has mercy because Abraham asked God to have mercy, right? Yes, yes. Well, Moses is doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, God is making Moses the same offer that he made to Abraham, and Moses is acting in that moment like Abraham acted, begging well, and pleading for the mercy that. of God. Yeah, yeah. And so he said, oh God... You have brought this people out of the land of Egypt. You have done miracles, mighty acts to save them. And you promised to make their descendants as many as there are stars in the sky. Wow. Oh God, you promised to give the land of Canaan to these people. The milk, mm -hmm. land flowing with milk and honey yeah. like we're going to go to one of these days. Mm -hmm. So please God. Remember your covenant. And that's a really important word. Covenant. covenant all right? And um, remember your, your covenant with these people, your covenant promise. So God remembered his promise, his covenant promise. Mm -hmm. And he took back, and it even says in the scripture that God repented of Whoa. his wanting to destroy the people. He turned the other direction and took back his threat to destroy the people. And Moses, now that he's pleaded, he's had mercy, now Moses is going to give him an earful. Moses went down the mountain. He was carrying the two stone tablets because God, God was just filling in the final details. The, the stone tablets were to be the thing where that law was written, so it'll always be there. There'll be no question. It's written in stone. This is a contract. Moses coming down the mountain with those two stone tablets with instructions for how the people should live in this marriage with God. And he got to the camp and he saw the calf. And he saw the false Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And he saw the people taking the name of the Lord in vain and going after other gods. And he threw the tablets to the ground in anger, and they broke into pieces. Because again, the people had broken their promises. Yes, they did. Moses <clears throat> took the golden calf, and he melted it in a fire, and he ground that up into a fine powder. And he mixed the powder in with the water and made the people drink it. You are kidding. Yeah, I know. I know. And uh, and then he turned to his brother this Aaron. This is not cool, way. Like. Yeah, no, it's not. You know, Moses is angry, right? And there's yeah. going to be there's going to be consequences. This is not cool, way. Like. Yeah, this, they're going to be consequences. And, and, and here the interesting thing, I've been talking about marriage, right? So yeah. If you go on into the book of Leviticus later in the laws, um, there's a, a point in which Rules are laid out if a husband gets jealous of his wife or or, or she's accused of adultery mm -hmm. or cheating, like Israel had cheated. Right. There's a ceremony in which basically there's these bitter herbs and stuff that are ground up and put into water, and if she, and she drinks it, and if she drinks this and nothing happens, then she's innocent. But if there's an adverse reaction, then that indicates that she was in she fact was, unfaithful oh, to her husband. Wow. 
this is a parallel sort of thing. This yeah. is that same rule now for the whole entire people. Have you been faithful to God? Were you cheating on God? This is the this is kind of the test, right? So he mixed that powder with water, made the people drink it, and he turned to Aaron and he said, What were you thinking? Why did you do this? Exactly. And Aaron was, and this is where Aaron, then he breaks another commandment. He lies. Oh no. Aaron's like, well, oh, you know, no. um, these they just wanted it, and so I just took some of the gold and we threw it into the fire, and out came this golden calf. He completely doesn't take responsibility oh, for his actions. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. And man, I mean, just bad to worse. And so Moses saw that the people were disobedient. And remember, now they've drunk all this stuff. Yeah. And there's it's kind of like this ceremony to see who's been faithful and who hasn't, because not everybody worshipped. Is that right? I didn't again, know. Now Aaron I had. Aaron yeah. had. Not everybody was, and, and you know, some people might have even kind of half-heartedly gone along with it, but we're still wanting to be faithful with God. And so Moses says, any of you who are on the Lord's side, come to me, stand over here. And the whole tri tribe of Levi came, all right, the one tribe that, mm -hmm. that held out, and they weren't the ones doing this. It was, well, except for Aaron, mm -hmm. but Levi came. And from that day on, they were the tribe that was set to serve the Lord God. They were going to be the priests. Isn't that something else? Yeah. 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 So, so Aaron's, then, Aaron's arrogance, arrogant yeah. Aaron, yeah. lost out in being a priest. Well, he, he became the high priest. He absolutely was. Um, and there are problems later with the tribe of Levi. Uh, his sons, for example, later in the story, uh, they come and they don't follow the ritual rules yeah, that huh? you're supposed to follow when you're ministering to the Lord. Because right. remember, the whole thing is the tabernacle is supposed to be this place where God hangs out with the people, right. kind of like your living room when you're right. hanging out with your friends. Right. And you need to keep it night and nice and tidy and keep things in order so everybody's in peace with one another. Right. Well, um, the two sons of Aaron don't do that, and they offer what Scripture calls illicit fire. It was kind of like they just didn't do it the way they were supposed to do it, and they died instantaneously. Don't mess with God. That's the that's the thing. But but again, it's not just because it's just an arbitrary rule. All of this was for the purpose of allowing God uh, and the people to to dwell together. That's right. And God is so holy, it's kind of like, you know, playing with fire. You don't no. play with fire. No, you don't. You know, it's, it's like um, I, in my basement, I've got my furnace. And it's really great when that fire is controlled and mm -hmm. I can use it and it keeps my house warm. Mm -hmm. But if we don't follow the rules and keep things in right, right order and keep things cleaned up, what can happen? The machine breaks down. That's right. And the fire will, will start a fire and it'll be a disaster. That's right. Well, I gotta be careful. And and a good place for us all to be careful, and I think this is a story that we should remember for this point, is that God loves us so much in this, it, it's like we are the it's talked about elsewhere that the church of Jesus Christ, we're the bride of Christ. Um, God loves us that much that God wants us to be faithful to him. Mm -hmm. Right? With everything that we are. And when we compromise ourselves by doing things that we ought not do or not loving our neighbors as ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, we're being unfaithful like the people were here That's right. and we're worshiping other things. And so, you know, we're not always going to get it perfect, but um, we should really just, we should try our best to be as faithful as we could be because it's, it's what you do when you love somebody. Yeah. Right? That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. If, if, if we don't, if we don't love somebody, then that's when we might be unfaithful or do terrible things. But if we really love someone, we want we want to, to care for them and, and care for the relationship. And, and that's what we're called to do here. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So love one another. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and we could sing that song, or we have one final song here that we, yeah. nor we normally have our space to sing. Well, and you know what, Patty, I thought about you know, the songs that you like, and, you know, and I think this is good, 
Patty, you would have said, let's sing this one, because the whole thing is, is that we need to be and have God in our lives all the time. Yeah. And because he loves us and we need to love him just as much, that soon, very soon, we'll all be with him. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to sing. That's right. Are you ready? Let's do it. Here we go. And a one, and a one, and a one, two, three, four. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. And, and when we live in that relationship with God and we're going to see the King, you want to be like, you know, you want to take a bath and have good robes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some, so we can say we want to clean our act up a little Actually, bit. Well, you know what, that's it. Because when we want to be in the presence of God, yeah. we need to ask for forgiveness of our sins. Yeah, yeah. And then so that we can be in His holy, holy presence. Amen. And I think, don't you think too, Pastor Sam, that the reason that maybe perhaps we're not as fearful mm -hmm. to have him be in our presence it is because his only son Jesus taught us how to truly mm -hmm. love yeah. so that we can do that and not be uh, don't be afraid yeah. Yeah. don't be afraid and, and not only did he teach us you know the Bible tells us that we are in him uh -huh. that he is a covering it's almost like um, you know, he is our garment. He is our clothing. He's the thing that God sees. Jesus' faithfulness and love, that's what God sees when he looks at us. He sees his son, Jesus Christ. And so we should look at each other and see Jesus in them, right? That's right. That's exactly right. Because you are my brother in Christ. Amen. And Amen. I am your sister. sister. Amen. That's exactly it. We're all brothers and sisters. And we've got one big brother, and his name is Jesus. That's right. All right. That's right. Well, listen, let's close with a word of prayer, okay? okay you ready? Terrific. Lord, I just give you thanks for this time that you've given us to explore your word and just ask, Lord, that you would help us be faithful. Help us remember that we are united to you by faith, that we are made new creation in Christ Jesus, and you want to you wanna hang out with us. You want to live in our midst. You want to dwell in our hearts. So, Lord, help us be faithful as we seek to, to live this out. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So we'll see you all again soon. And until then, God be with you. Bye. Absolutely. Bye-bye now.